Track 1. Listening, Part 1. Worksheet 1. You will hear three different extracts. For questions 1 to 6, choose the answer A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. There are two questions for each extract. Extract 1. You hear two friends discussing the topic of reading books in printed or electronic form. Now look at questions 1 and 2. What are you reading? <laughs> it's a novel. Quite gripping. Seeing me reading on my phone screen, you'd never know what it was, would you? Anyway, it's nothing too cultured. It being electronic is a plus if you don't want people to see easily what you're reading. I mean, if it isn't some great work of literature, but something a bit trashy. <laughs> E-books have cured my terrible habit. I tend to skip bits, especially if it's a thriller. I'll rush on maybe 20 pages from where I am in the plot just to give myself an idea of the ending. It can really spoil it, though. But I haven't figured out how to do it on this electronic reader. These electronic books sure beat carrying heavy books around. And if you decide you'd like a particular book, you can just get it immediately, as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. Though there's something about turning the pages and having a book in my hand that feels right. And if you love a book, it stays on your shelf like an old friend you can stop by and visit whenever you like. Of course, e-books are always in your library too. They don't get battered like my most treasured paperbacks do. Now listen again. What are you reading? <laughs> it's a novel. Quite gripping. Seeing me reading on my phone screen, you'd never know what it was, would you? Anyway, it's nothing too cultured. It being electronic is a plus if you don't want people to see easily what you're reading. I mean, if it isn't some great work of literature, but something a bit trashy. <laughs> E-books have cured my terrible habit. I tend to skip bits, especially if it's a thriller. I'll rush on maybe 20 pages from where I am in the plot just to give myself an idea of the ending. It can really spoil it, though. But I haven't figured out how to do it on this electronic reader. These electronic books sure beat carrying heavy books around. And if you decide you'd like a particular book, you can just get it immediately, as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. Though there's something about turning the pages and having a book in my hand that feels right. And if you love a book, it stays on your shelf like an old friend you can stop by and visit whenever you like. Of course, e-books are always in your library too. They don't get battered like my most treasured paperbacks do. Extract 2. You hear a woman telling a friend about a book he gave her. Now look at questions 3 and 4. So, what did you think of the book I gave you? The Man in the Forest. It was certainly an emotion-packed tale. There wasn't much about the man in the first half. I thought it got more gripping once he came into it more. I really identified with the main female character, the woman called Lucy. I can see why you thought it'd be my sort of thing, the blend of crime, mystery and social issues. It was quite disturbing in parts, as you suggested it would be. I did wonder why they chose that cover for the paperback edition, though. What? The picture of the key? I thought it made the book look quite intriguing. It doesn't really evoke the essence of what it's all about, though. The book's chief strength is as a tightly plotted thriller that also draws attention to certain social injustices. I mean, the image on the front cover has the potential to summarise the content or at least highlight the issues the book tackles which it totally missed doing. If it had done, I'd have been more convinced it was going to be the kind of thing I'm typically drawn to. Still, it sold over 10 million copies, so what do I know? Now listen again. So what did you think of the book I gave you? The Man in the Forest? It was certainly an emotion-packed tale. There wasn't much about the man in the first half. I thought it got more gripping once he came into it more. I really identified with the main female character, the woman called Lucy. I can see why you thought it'd be my sort of thing, 
the blend of crime, mystery and social issues. It was quite disturbing in parts, as you suggested it would be. I did wonder why they chose that cover for the paperback edition, though. What? The picture of the key? I thought it's made the book look quite intriguing. It doesn't really evoke the essence of what it's all about, though. The book's chief strength is as a tightly plotted thriller that also draws attention to certain social injustices. I mean, the image on the front cover has the potential to summarise the content or at least highlight the issues the book tackles, which it totally missed doing. If it had done, I'd have been more convinced it was going to be the kind of thing I'm typically drawn to. Still, it sold over 10 million copies, so what do I know? Extract 3. You hear two writers talking about their daily routine. Now look at questions 5 and 6. My day starts with a look at the papers. Oh, really? I deal with emails before anything else. Emails used to be exciting. Now it's all just stuff to clear. I'm pretty disciplined about checking them, but I find it doesn't hurt to switch off the internet most of the time. Although I sometimes need to consult it for reference. No, I start with the news and concentrate on the human interest stories. I couldn't make up that kind of thing. So why bother when I can get a spark of inspiration so easily? I've been meaning to tell you. I've started to write standing with my keyboard and mouse at waist height. I reason that being on my feet for hours is a form of exercise. I think it wards off all those nasty things that start happening in the body when you're seated. Though I'm probably kidding myself. Well, I force myself to take a long walk in the afternoon, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't have a voice in my head reminding me that it's also good for my brain. To be honest, I jump at the chance to opt out, say, if it's raining. If that's the case... I'll sometimes do some sit-ups indoors, but with a feeling of resignation. Now listen again. My day starts with a look at the papers. Oh, really? I deal with emails before anything else. Emails used to be exciting. Now it's all just stuff to clear. I'm pretty disciplined about checking them, but I find it doesn't hurt to switch off the internet most of the time. Although I sometimes need to consult it for reference. No, I start with the news and concentrate on the human interest stories. I couldn't make up that kind of thing. So why bother when I can get a spark of inspiration so easily? I've been meaning to tell you. I've started to write standing with my keyboard and mouse at waist height. I reason that being on my feet for hours is a form of exercise. I think it wards off all those nasty things that start happening in the body when you're seated. Though I'm probably kidding myself. Well, I force myself to take a long walk in the afternoon, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't have a voice in my head reminding me that it's also good for my brain. To be honest, I jump at the chance to opt out, say, if it's raining. If that's the case... I'll sometimes do some sit-ups indoors, but with a feeling of resignation.